starting off with the back. How you doing? Welcome everybody to the Wolf Den Podcast. Here we are, and we're here with Will. Hey, oh. how you guys doing? What's up, world? So, uh, welcome. So this time, maybe we got the technical difficulties fixed. Maybe, maybe. we didn't. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> I think I did, but now my scene switch has stopped working. This stupid thing isn't animating. I don't, I don't understand. Everything's falling apart. Uh, no echo yet. Keep talking at the same time. What does that mean? Don't, don't you start with us now. If we want to have an echo on the show, we will have an echo Everybody on the show. Re- Tired of you people. Relax. Gaslighting us into thinking echoes are bad. Everybody relax. There's a lot to talk about today. <laughs> Uh, the main topic is going to be some switch to garbage. Yes. I completely forgot about the iPhone stuff. I want to talk about the iPhone stuff. Yeah. We're going to talk about the switch to stuff, but then I want to immediately talk about the iPhone. I think the two might go hand in hand Mm -hmm. in a way. And we'll talk about it, you know, when we get to the iPhone stuff, but I do think that you're right. That should be a top of the list priority. Yes. Uh, so we'll get to all of that. Uh, so Wood is streaming right now. He's okay. very upset that he wasn't in the 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 ten year anniversary you know, video. People are asking me why he wasn't in the ten year anniversary <laughs> video. I'm like, he's not on Wolf Ten. <laughs> he's on the Nintendo podcast. Thank you. Like, thank you. <laughs> it's a separate thing. I didn't. E- I didn't even want to be in it. Right. I was gonna have just everybody else in, it and I wasn't gonna be in it. Right. But then. Uh, I, there needed to, there needed context. Some things needed. It context. was good connective tissue. Yeah, there needed to be. And I, if you notice, I'm barely in it. <laughs> I noticed you were wearing the same outfit you wore when we went out to dinner. That's on Sunday. Yeah, which means you filmed that oh, and yeah. uploaded it the next day. Oh yeah, baby, I filmed that when we got home. Yep. But actually, no, I streamed and th- no, I didn't stream. I filmed that very late. Yeah, as I, I was, I was, I was trying to explain that to people. <laughs> Yeah, that was a rough video to edit. Yeah. It, t- it took it took a really long time. Uh, Wolf Den Dad gave him a shout out. Yeah, I I I thought it was funny that Wood wasn't in the video, and every time he was mentioned, he was just getting he was just catching wrecked, strays. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of wish <laughs> we leaned into that yeah. more. I wish that there was more of that because I thought it was funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, hi. Hey, uh, Lorian, thank you for the eight months. Finally got my new Amazon account switched over to resubscribe. Watched the 10 year video today. Here's to another 10. Well, thank you, dude. Can you imagine you gotta and, do this 10 more years. Imagine. <laughs> and then Mars Doze, thank you for the 39 months. Congratulations on 10 years. Thanks. I think the auto scene switcher is still backwards. So, like, if I talk, it goes to you, and if you talk, it goes to me. Yeah. We'll see. Now I, right. ha- I have a mouse, so yes. I, c- I can always just turn it off again, yeah. but uh, I don't want to. Anyway, uh, let's... Oh, look, it's Wolf Den Dead. I gave oh, the Australian God. honorable mention. Thanks, Dead. Well, stand-up guy. All of the com- all of the comments are just about Dead. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about the Switch 2 yes. is getting uh, Hall Sensing. Do you sensing. want to talk about the, the Gamescom thing first or the the Joy-Cons first? I just got a torrent protection thing from whatever website this is. Isn't this just... It's GameSpot. GameSpot, what are you doing, man? Uh, Sure. You know what? Let's talk about the Gamescom thing. Okay. Because I already talked about that you did. pretty well, extensively. So we can just... Uh, yeah. Well, you talked about it on the Nintendo podcast. That's the one with Wood. <laughs> That's the one that Wood's a part of. This right, is Wolf right, Den right, podcast. Right, right, right. Which I don't know if you right, notice, right. Uh, the hosts of the Wolf Den podcast are both named Wolf. <laughs> so that is why. <laughs> Good point. Okay. Good point. All right. I'll try to breeze through this as best I can. Um, in Cologne last month, Nintendo's public Gamescom showroom floor let uh, let you play Pikmin 4 and Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but behind the scenes, the company had more up its sleeves. Developer presentations for Switch 2 took place behind closed doors, according to Eurogamer, with partners shown tech demos of how well the system is designed to run. 
One Switch 2 demo is souped up version of uh, Breath of the Wild designed to hit the Switch 2's beefier target spec. This is just a tech demo for clarification. There's no suggestion that the game will be re-released. Uh, Nintendo has yet to publicly discuss plans for its inevitable successor, uh, though it's though its new hardware is widely expected to launch at some point next year. Uh, word that it is now being shown to external developers comes as details have begun to emerge around when we may see the system launch. A recent report pinned the Switch 2's arrival for later next year with development kits uh, now in the hands of some key developers. This chimes with what Eurogamer has previously heard, though on timing, it is understood that Nintendo is keen to launch the system sooner uh, if possible. Publicly, Nintendo has announced a strong lineup for uh, the current Switch for the rest of 2023, including uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder and Super Mario RPG. Okay. So yeah, the Switch uh, was shown behind closed doors. Switch 2 was shown behind closed doors at Gamecom uh, in Germany, and apparently was running a very high-end version of breath of the wild so this was rumored weeks ago from uh reset era yes you know you know the guy yes uh reset era some guy on reset era uh hey it's we did it hey Hey, happy 10 years somebody on the on reset era leaked it uh, a a a reputable leaker Mm -hmm. and then people were saying that's not the real leaker that's a fake trying to be the real guy uh, and then uh, the account got deleted or the guy, uh, the, the post got deleted or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was saying that developers were uh, checking out the game. We talked about it last week, actually. It yeah. was uh, that guy also said that they had Final Fantasy VII Remake running. Yes. Remember that? And that the quality was like PS5 quality or something yeah, like that. Yeah, which is crazy. And we were like, nah. No. Nah. It makes sense that... They're showing it at Gamescom. Yes. Uh, I heard about it from other people, like uh, like not anybody I know, but I saw, listen to other podcasts mm-hmm. and they and they heard confirmation from other people who were at Gamescom that Nintendo had some like high security and some backroom areas and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that makes sense. Uh, the Final Fantasy VII running on it, it doesn't make that's any sense. That's a little that's a little iffy, but I and mean these reports. So we had Eurogamer. We also have Video Games Chronicle. Okay. That it are both confirming this. Yeah. And neither of them mentioned Final Fantasy VII Remake. Right. That, we talked about last week, is probably like an internal tech demo that Square yes. did just because it was probably easy for them to do. Yeah. But there's no... I wouldn't anticipate Final Fantasy VII. The fact that that leaker said might be a launch title is insane. Yeah. Because there's no shot. Especially because, to my understanding, Sony helped fund the development of Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's yeah, why it's exclusive to the Sony. I said that on the Nintendo podcast and nobody believed me? <laughs> you should have said know. that I said it. Then they would have believed I you. I did. I did. Um... And and then they were. I think it was, it was either Jackson or E was trying to tell me that it was it. Uh, Crisis Core is on Xbox or something. And I was like, okay, so yeah, that's not. What's that have to? And like, well, it's the same story. And I'm like, so what does that have to do with anything? It was yeah. they, they didn't fund that. They funded Final Fantasy Seven. Anyway, so yeah, Final Fantasy Seven. I wouldn't count on, but. Uh, Video Games Chronicle specifically says that uh, they were showing the. Unreal Engine tech demo of the Matrix. Uh, oh, Awakening. Remember? Yeah, yeah, the Matrix where Neo's flying around yeah. in the city. Uh, that is running on the Switch. Okay. So, I'd imagine that that tech demo is set up to run on low powered hardware. Yeah. So, well, I, don't, I don't know how good it. Looks. I don't know because that tech demo was only available on X on Series X and PlayStation Five. It was not available on last gen systems. It wasn't available on PC. It was available on PC. I think it was available on Nvidia cards. You looked that up because I remember I wanted it, I wanted to see it, but I couldn't because I didn't have a PS5 or a Series X at the time. Okay, so it was it wasn't able to run on Xbox One or PS4. Yeah, it just says PS5 and Xbox Series X. Yeah, it is an Unreal Engine Five tech demo. Okay. And that would make sense because Unreal 5 is supposed to be like the next gen version. While the demo did not get a PC release, Epic released the city environment in the demo as a sample project titled City Sample in their Unreal Engine 5 workshop. Got it. This was immediately used by fans to generate a Windows exclusive 
a Windows executable package in which the city can be navigated, offering the ability to control several parameters of the game engine. The assets were also reused later in several fan-made demos featuring characters such as Spider-Man and Batman. Got it. So it was not never officially released. Mm -hmm. It is possible that it wasn't actually Matrix Awakens, and it was, in fact, just the city. Got it. <laughs> Uh, well, I have the VG Chronicle uh, article here. Mm. Uh, one Switch 2 demo is understood to have been an improved version of Breath of the Wild running at a higher frame rate, frame rate and resolution than the original game did on hardware targeting the new console spec. There is no suggesting no suggestion that the game will be re-released. <clears throat> Another source claimed that Nintendo showcased Epic's impressive Matrix Awakens Unreal 5 tech demo originally released to showcase the power of the PS5 and Series X in 2021, running on target specs for its next console. The demo is said to have been running using NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling technology with advanced ray tracing enabled and visuals comparable to Sony and Microsoft's current gen systems. What had ray tracing? The Matrix Awakens okay, demo. Okay, okay. Uh, it should be noted this does not mean the Switch successor will support raw power anywhere near the PS5 or Series X, which are in portable devices. Okay, so uh, Holy Lettuce in the chat says uh, he mentioned the Breath of the Wild thing that you just said. Yeah. Um, but he says running at 4K 60 frames per second with ray tracing, which the Video Games Chronicle article does not say. It, the Video Games Chronicle article just says a uh, higher frame rate and resolution. Yeah. It doesn't specify. Holy Lettuce says Spawn Wave said something about it in today's video. Did he say 4K 60 frames per second? Because that sounds ridiculous. Well, what a breath of a while. It ran at 30 frames per second, right? When it could. When it could. <laughs> no, it ran at 30, but it didn't hit that all of the time. Okay, there were well, some areas where it Let's just dipped. say it hit 30. Mm -hmm. It was like 30. What was the resolution? It wasn't Ten 1080p, right? It was like 900 No, something? I think docked it's 1080p. Okay. Yeah. So it, it Handheld, it'd be 700. All right. So it's got, it's at least more than that. I think unless there's like confirmation, the next logical step from 1080p 60 is 4K. It's 1080p 30 is 4K 60. So, I would imagine that this new Switch ha is running Breath of the Wild at 60 frames per second. That right. makes sense. 4K is a huge step right. up. Um, I'm trying to see what... I'm trying to make sure that it was actually... Oh, no, it was 900p docked. Okay. Uh, Originally. Yeah. Uh, on the original Switch, it was mm -hmm. 900p docked and 720p undocked. So... 1080p 60 it's still better it's still yeah. better so so i'm trying to lower expectations around here right jl from wv says with dlss 4k would be likely a 1080p upscaled uh yeah 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 uh, it's possible that it has a DLSS chip inside of it. Yeah. Um, uh, Invader Gold uh, says, just wanted to mention alongside all this, Nate the Hate said a big part of the Breath of the Wild demo was the loading times. They are apparently were uh, nearly non-existent and went from menu to game in a fade out and a uh, quick moment. Uh, that's probably a sign of a completely different memory used. So according to Nate the Hate, it's using a similar like instant start that like the PS5 and the Series X do. Where there's like no loading times. I mean, going from the Switch One to the Switch Two, uh -huh. playing a game that was made for the Switch One, mm -hmm. I would be shocked if the loading times were not faster. Right. You know that that just seems like it well, should some, be a given. I think some of those games on like PS4 to PS5 and uh, Xbox One to Series X don't automatically get faster loading times or don't necessarily get the automatic load you know you have to actually play the ps5 or the series x version to get the instant uh load so that those games are specifically optimized for that technology it the yeah the reason why the ps5 and the series x have such high such quick load times is because they use the ssd right and i'd imagine the switch 2 isn't gonna have like some special some i don't think the the switch 2 is going to have 
a massive difference in architecture like that, uh-huh. I think it will just be overall. Well, faster. I think because you know the Switch One currently uses a solid state drive and it doesn't have nearly the um, you know the fast loading times as a PS Five or a Series X. It's right. because the PS5 and the Series X have, spe- have specific technology well, inside of it. The X, the Series X, I know uh, off the top of my head, they branded Velocity Architecture. So, so that was a lot of uh, n- next generation console gaff. Okay, like PlayStation really, really like ran that down our throats. Yeah, but it's really just an SSD. It's just in it. It's just in the okay, PS5. But you can put an SSD in your PS4 and the loading times are not instantaneous. They're faster, but not instantaneous. Sure. Sure. But it, it's it's still just an SSD. The games aren't... De- it, it. I guess I would argue that the games on the PS4 are not developed for to be used on an right. SSD. Um, but they did do a lot of flowery language to just say, here's a fucking SSD. Because right. if you put an SSD in a PC, it, your games are going to load faster. Right. You know? Um, so I think the Switch, even now, loads pretty quick. It's just, the, you know, it's a fucking Android tablet. Yeah. You, you know, it's not going to be as fast as a PS5 or an Xbox. So um, the next generation one, it's going to be more powerful. It's probably going to load faster. Mm-hmm. It's not just an SSD. There are specific texts like direct storage that matter. It's, a, again, it's mostly because it's an SSD. And then there's all this other stuff that they just really tried to ram down our throats. Well, the SSD helps. But I think direct storage and velocity architecture, that's really what makes it, you know, the lightning fast it's, boot. I, I'm, I'm just saying... It's it was a lot of marketing speak. It's It's because it's just an SSD that these guys didn't have in their consoles before. But again, if you put an SSD in a PlayStation Four, the games don't launch instantaneously like they do on the PS Five. The games will run faster, but they don't you know go from that's because the games aren't developed for the SSD. Right, they're they're develop right, and on PS Five they're developed for the SSD and also yes. uh, using the you know the direct storage software that Sony developed and to the blast make it- processing. Yeah, and the blast processing. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just the, the games are developed for the SSD because everybody has an SSD. All right, all right. Nobody's on my side in the chat. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> um. Oh, here's Brutal Beast is on my side. I get what Bob's saying. Ratchet, Sony said Ratchet and Clank could only run on the PS5, but now on a PC, it works on a shitty fucking PC. It does, it does work. <laughs> yeah, that was a big deal. Because on low-end specs, it'll run on a hard, a regular hard drive. Yeah. I'm not saying that the new consoles don't have some flowery shit that makes it run better, but it's almost entirely the SSD, and then they have some other shit that, that they can say they developed without lying about it magic got it magic yeah (laughs) so anyway i think if the new switch is going to be loading stuff quicker Mm -hmm. it's just going to be a more powerful thing i don't think they're going to have anything similar to like what the uh, ps5 and the xbox have with their uh flowery language um so I'm skeptical on the 4K 60 business. That sounds crazy. I think the 60 business is one thing. Mm -hmm. I think the 4K, it's probably not going to be true 4K. It'll probably be upscaled. It'll probably just be pure DLSS. We're not going to get true 4K. Yeah. We're going to get emulated 4K. And I'm sure it'll look great. I'm sure it'll it'll look fine. Yeah. You know, and if you're the type of person where like that matters to you, you need true 4K, you're not getting a Switch. It's also weird that they're doing Breath of the Wild and not Tears of the Kingdom. Probably because that game is like already done. And they were able to optimize it. Yeah. Probably in the development of Tears of the Kingdom, yeah. they were able to optimize it. Um. So yeah, again, it's also a handheld. So like, I mean, maybe we'll see a 1080p screen in the device. I'm seeing Ooh. a lot of Windows handhelds and stuff that have over 1080p screens. Yeah. So... uh 
maybe Nintendo will do that just for just to say it has it. Nintendo's not one to bump specs just for the hell of it, but yeah. something's got to be different from a Switch One to a Switch Two. Yeah, enough to be like, make enough to make you want to upgrade to, yeah. to the new one. Um, but again, they're just dev kits, so we don't know exactly what's happening. We don't know what yeah. it, what it'll be like exactly. Um, Mike J file, thank you for the four months, and J K I M ninety four, thank you for the ten months, and Muffy, thanks for the prime, and C Soul, thanks for the thirty five months, and Mars Douge, thanks for the thirty nine months, and I think that's it. Not just an SSD, SATA, SAS, and oh, now we're getting sassy, and <laughs> NVMe are the interfaces. NVMe is the new shit, and there's memory channel bandwidth. Okay, how come the PS5 has the NVMe s slot, and it's the same as my computer? It's just a fucking SSD. It's not something that Sony developed. It's the same fucking SSD that I can put in my computer. But Sony does specified that it needs to be i think a gen 4 nvme ssd so yeah, it's they're an off the shelf nvme right but you can still get like older generation nvmes that don't run at the speed sony recommends for playstation 5 right it's got to be fast yeah it's got to yeah, be fast yeah it's so it, the technology that is used uh is important it's important it's just an off the shelf ssd <laughs> it runs just as fast as the one that's in there already the one that's out of it the one that i put in myself runs exactly the same as the one that's on the inside and i bought it at my actually i didn't they gave the uh, fucking gigabyte gave me it okay but still it's just a gigabyte one that, right. I, that i could put in my computer it's okay. the same shit okay all right okay fine i'm gonna i'm gonna fucking lose my mind be an idiot but the switch wouldn't have an nvme yeah right it's gonna have whatever it's gonna i don't know what it's gonna have it's probably gonna have a micro sd card it's probably gonna have just oh regular... yeah, micro sd seems like a given yeah well the 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 onboard storage who knows yeah. i don't even know what it is now i, I just, have no idea i just know it, it's like flash memory but i don't know like the specifics of it yeah i have no idea yeah it's it's built into the board so yeah. I, I have no idea but I'd imagine it's not going to be anything much fancier than what than what's currently available right. out there. Tan Man Slim says 32 gigabyte. Thanks, dude. That's not <laughs> what I was asking. <laughs> um. All right, let's talk about the Joy Cons. Yes. Uh, Nintendo Switch Two could leave Joy Con drift behind, according to a patent applicant. Uh, details on the new Nintendo patent application for controller with magnetic analog sticks have surfaced, suggesting that the company's next peripheral won't suffer, possibly on a Switch 2, from the infamous drift issues of the Nintendo Switch era. Spotted by video game accessibility consultant Laura Kate Dale, Nintendo, uh, Nintendo originally filed for a patent in May, and the application was published on September 7th. No guarantees, but if this is for the Switch 2, this could end analog stick drift issues uh, next gen, Dale tweeted. Uh, better known as Hall Effect joysticks, uh, these have small magnets attached to them and sensors that measure the voltage generated by the magnetic field. Typically, Hall Effect joysticks are more durable and have longer lifespan than a traditional joysticks, which use potentiometers as the contacts eventually wear out on these joysticks and, uh, and cause the voltage readings to ch change, creating stick drift. Uh, it's worth noting that Hall Effect joysticks can wear out over time as well, although they typically have a much longer lifespan in comparison. Joy-Con drift has been a major issue for the Switch ever since the console launched uh, in 2017. Numerous uh, stories have popped up over the years of players suffering from this issue, with one former employee of a repair center tasked with fixing those controllers, claiming that they were overwhelmed with work. Nintendo originally sent out new replacements to consumers, uh, who mailed their joysticks, the, mailed their Joy Cons between 2018 and 20. Uh, sorry. Let me start that over. Nintendo originally sent out new replacements to customers who mailed in their Joy Cons between 2017 and 2018. And currently, Nintendo fixes faulty Joy Cons for free. Uh, while Nintendo has confirmed that no new Switch hardware will be released before its end of the fiscal year, uh, which ends in March 31st, 2024. 
Uh, rumors have been circulating that the tech demos for a Switch successor have been shown up behind closed doors at GameCon. So I'm trying to see the original article that I read about mm-hmm. this. Um, it Because I, I saw that Nintendo was patenting Hall effect sticks, and that seems weird. You, they can't do that because there's already it was it was in the fucking Dreamcast, right? And right now everyone's doing Hall effect analog sticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the aftermarket companies are doing Hall effect, uh, so you can't just copyright that. Also, I think Gully Kit it tried to copyright it. Yeah. They they have a patent that's uh, pending. Well, patent doesn't necessarily mean copyright. Because mm-hmm. patents eventually expire. Mm-hmm. I uh, also don't think they're going to win the patent. I think they have one in China, which is like, yeah. means nothing. Yeah. I think this is most specifically about, not specifically a Hall Effect joystick. It is a type of joystick that use, that happens to use mag- magnets specifically for a Nintendo console. Okay. Like I think they're being really specific and granular with what they're patenting. Does so, that make sense? So, I'd ima- I mean, they have to patent whatever they're going to put into the new thing, mm-hmm. you know? Um, Turfy Man says, the patent also alludes to the potential feature of developers being able to control the feeling of resistance in the joysticks, at least as far as can be understood from the language used where the patent describes the speed of return of the operation element, the stick, to the Initial position can be made faster in the controller using the MRF. Uh, okay, so it could be like a what do you call it? Uh, the, the an HD stick. There you go. Yeah, that's what they'll call it. Um, I in the original article that I read, wherever it was, I heard that it was using uh some sort of. Now, I don't have a source for this, so now I'm just going off of my brain, which could be wrong. But I remember hearing that it was a, a magnetic liquid. And when you move the joystick one way, it the liquid gets displaced, and that's mm. how it registers where you're moving. Okay. And a normal Hall Effect stick is just magnets. You push right. it one way, and the magnet knows that it feels the resistance, you know. So that would be very different yeah. than traditional Hall Effect sticks. Um. So I don't, I don't know. Looking at the patent now, it looks like just a regular Hall Effect stick. Yeah. I don't see anything about any liquid or anything. I mean, I do you know how to read a patent? Because I don't. They're very confusing. No, they're very confusing. But you just look at the diagrams and go, all right, that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. Like here, initial position, right end, left end. That's going beep, boop with yeah. the joystick. And there you go. I mean, it's proof that Nintendo is actually trying to fix the issue. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that it's it hasn't come out for the current switch that they're saving it specifically for the next because they would be admitting that there's a problem right which they have but yeah. in their own little cheeky way yeah because they can't full-on say there's a problem mm-hmm. that lines up with another report i read good yeah i i i heard it was like some sort of liquid stuff mm-hmm. which would make that would make it uh reasonable for a patent yeah because that would be a, a unique way to to go along the uh to get around the 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 uniqueness also i i could i would assume i would think it'd be really weird if nintendo just straight up was like oh everybody's using hall effect okay we'll do that too yeah no nintendo is gonna do their own little weird nintendo thing yeah and I'd also imagine that these Joy-Con on the new Switch are going to be a little different. So that yeah. they can't work on the old one. Or if they do, it'll be weird. Yeah. And they got to do it in a way where it's like it differentiates the new Switch from the old Switch. Mm-hmm. Ferrofluid? No, it was called something weird. It was I like, hope it wasn't Mercury because that is toxic. No, it was it was Magnet something. I remember looking it up. And then I had to look up what it meant. Mm -hmm. And I found all pictures of it and stuff. It was was Nintendo Juice. All right, yeah, that's what it is. (laughs) If anybody could find that article. Oh, that magnetoherological fluid. Magic. Got it. (laughs) Wait till you see what this shit looks like. 
If it's what I'm thinking of, it, it looks like the T-1000, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, it's like, it almost looks like dust. Oh, okay. It doesn't actually look of. like a uh, fluid. Right. But like that shit isn't in a Hall sensing stick. Right. As far as I know, Hall sensing stick is just right. hard magnets. But they want to use like the whole this. Right. Nintendo Jizz will totally become the name. Okay. Yeah. Magnetorhelogical magnet, fluid. There was speculation Nailed to it. do words in the patents that it could have resistance with the joystick to make it more immersive. Yeah. Uh, adjustable resistance or something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're going to have some weird gimmicky stuff that's in there that n- no developers are ever going to use. That sounds like it'd be cool, though, to like have to fight against it. Yeah. That'd be cool. What MacBook are you using? Uh, M1 Max? I thought you didn't get the Max. No, I got the Mac. Okay. I didn't get the 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 top tier Max. There was one that had more memory. Right. I got 32 gigabytes. There was a 64. I just got the 32. Got it. Which was still a lot. Mm-hmm. and still does everything I need. Got it. Uh, this is a 2015 uh, Intel Core i7. <laughs> 16 gigs of RAM, not enough. 20, 20 what now? 2015. Oh my God. Yeah. It's older than that one. I know. That I retired. I keep saying I'll buy a new one, but I just keep pushing it back because I keep not having money. <laughs> it's a problem I have. Some fancy adjustable car suspensions use a magnetic liquid like that to stiffen and soften the suspension feel. Oh my God. You want a Windows computer? No, I'm good. Got plenty of them <laughs> laying around. Um. All right. So... I guess we're getting rid of Joy-Con Drift, finally. Yeah. Yes. Hooray. Uh, why don't we talk... You, hey, we're already talking about Apple. Yeah, might as well. Let's dive right into it, because I, I want to talk about it. The I'm iPhone excited. 15s uh, were revealed today, along with the Apple Watch Series 9. I'm excited for that. When can I get it? The f- iPhone yes. or the Apple Watch? Uh, I <laughs> don't want an Apple Watch. But it's cool, because now it has this thing where you can answer calls by just pinching. Pinching? Pinching. Oh, I can pinch it. <laughs> pinching. Oh, it's a calls that'll uh, just turn up your but What alarm. do I pinch on it? The whole thing? No, you literally just do this. That doesn't help me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you pinching? Not, the, on the hand you wear your watch on. You you just you pinch just, you just the pinch, air? You just pinch the air and it will answer the phone. How does it know? It, it senses the movement of your bones. <laughs> What if you're just pinching? <laughs> what if Zim comes over to me and I'm just pinching him? <laughs> well, then dude, guess what? You're calling mom. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, okay, so I'm ripe for a new iPhone. You have the 11, right? I have the 11 regular. Yeah. So, so it's a little tiny, and I'm cool with the size. That's why I got it. See, I also have the 11 regular, mm. and I'm fine with it. I have no desire. Mine's getting a little shitty. My, I have no desire to like upgrade this at all. It runs perfectly fine. You don't want to get the new one. No. Okay. But. All right. <laughs> you tell me it runs Resident Evil 4, and now all of a sudden, Mr. I got to buy Resident Evil 4 on every system. So I want a new phone because the battery alert. <laughs> the battery's not great. Right. And uh, it's getting a little slow sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it keeps filling up. I, I'm, I've got that issue like I always have. Right. Um, so now is a good time to upgrade. The iPhone 15 Pro, this article is about This is about the specifically games. the games, yeah. I kind of came into the showcase late. Yeah. I forgot that it was happening. Mm-hmm. I was like an hour in and I jumped in. Uh, but I came in just in time for the camera shit. Yeah. Uh. Same three cameras. Yeah. One of them's a five times 120 millimeter telephoto. Yeah. I need that. That's fancy. I need that in my life. The two of them can combine to make a stereoscopic camera for use in VR applications. That's cool. Yeah. I would love a type of camera that can scan things for me to 3D print. I'm sure... Because I know, like, 
they've for a while they've had like lidar and like yeah. 3d scanning i'm sure there's got to be like a program now they just need use. an app that will use all three cameras yeah and you just and you just well i know around. there's an app that'll use all three cameras for getting three different camera angles <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and also USB C. I want yes, USB C. Yes. That'd be great. Uh, you ex- you're gonna have to explain that one to mom and dad. I'm not doing it. It's a new port. You know the port that's in your Asus AirPods, or the port that charges your MacBook Air. Yes, that, that. too. Yep. It's stupid that it took them this long to it get is ridi- yeah, involved it's ridi- with that. Yeah. But, um, but uh, I actually, in anticipation for this, I bought a USB C cable for my car. Because oh, I was yeah? like, oh, I need a phone charger for the yeah. car. Wait a minute. Let me not get a lightning cable. Right. Uh, as if I don't have enough USB-C cables right. laying around. But I'm excited for that. I'm going to get it. Right. And now, I'm even more excited. I didn't think I was going to get the top tier one because I'm cool. Again, I'm cool with this yeah. size. But the camera and all this other shit. Yeah. And now, I got ray tracing. <laughs> Apple's next iPhone will boast some surprising gaming power. The company announced Tuesday that the iPhone 15 Pro, which is powered by Apple's new A17 Pro chip, uh, will feature real-time ray tracing graphics to its flagship phone. The hardware will power power native mobile versions of Capcom's Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4 Remake, as well as Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Mirage and Kojima Productions' Death Stranding. Wait, what? I didn't know the Death Str- I didn't know Death Stranding. Death Stranding wasn't in the conference. Yeah. This is an after thing. Oh. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. I'm gonna- I think that's the one I'm going to get, <laughs> even though I have it. Well, I can't keep buying games more than once. Yeah. Uh, Sribalan Santaf. No, I'm gonna do this. Santhamnama nailed it. Uh, Silicon Engineering Group VP you summoned the demon. Yeah, I did. <laughs> introduced a new chip. Or introduced a new chip during uh, Tuesday's Apple event and promised that the A17's internal GPU can run ray trace reflection smoothly, four times faster than the software-based rendering on current chips. Uh, he also called it the fastest chip ever on any smartphone. To showcase that speed, Apple brought out uh, developers of Ubisoft's The Division Resurgence, an upcoming free-to-play spinoff of the franchise, oh. and, and also uh, Hoyo versus uh, Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact to show those games on an iPhone. But the presentation went beyond games already designed explicitly for mobile devices, uh, revealing that Capcom will bring the console versions of Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4 Remake to iPhone 15 Pro later this year. Kojima Productions Death Stranding is also coming to iPhone 15 Pro this year. And next year, Ubisoft will bring the console version of Assassin's Creed Mirage to the iPhone. Uh, this is the first time the console version of Assassin's Creed will be natively available on a smartphone, said Greg Joswiak, uh, Apple's senior VP of Worldwide Marketing. Uh, Ubisoft has released multiple mobile versions of Assassin's Creed games over the past 15 years, but Mirage appears to be the first directly ported to iOS. Apple, Capcom, and Ubisoft did not discuss touchscreen controls for those games, though. Uh, Apple did promote that the iPhone supports Bluetooth, Bluetooth controllers, including the DualSense for the P- PlayStation 5. I think if these games are available on the desktop app store and on the iOS app store back to back, we I don't think that they are. But if they allow that, because we got Death Stranding, we know it's coming to the to the Mac MacBook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if it comes to the MacBook and the phone, and I could go back and forth between the two. That that's a would game be yeah. That would be life changing. Yeah, that will give my Steam account a run for its money. Yes, because like I know people don't like playing games on their phones. They 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 think mobile gaming stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but man, I'm telling you, you just slap a backbone controller on here. You got you got a, a handheld. Yeah, it, it's 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 that easy and it functions great. Um. So I just opened up my the app store on my computer. Okay. And some, not all, but some of the some of the apps I bought on my phone are here in my previously purchased. Are so, you able to play are you able to use them on your desktop? Yes. Like what? Like what's an app? Like you no, know, nothing major, like OneNote, uh Twitter, WhatsApp, uh 
ground news, like things like that. So they have not a, everything. Okay, so they have a desktop version and a yes, mobile, a mobile version. version. Yeah. Any of those paid? Do you have any paid apps that could be uh, none of these are paid. back and forth? No. I'm curious how that works. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's very impressive that uh, Genshin Impact is right. Like no. we had that forever. No, the, the impressive thing is the Assassin's, uh, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed Mirage blew my dick off. Yeah. Because that isn't out yet. Yeah. And uh, the two Resident Evil games. Yeah, those are out. Right. So, like, I mean, they're still but crazy. Gotta, like, Resident, like, both of those were actually supposed to be PS5 and Xbox Series X titles. And yeah. then due to uh, Outcry, they put them on last-gen systems. You know, Resident Evil, 5, Resident Evil 4 Remake is optimized for Series X and PlayStation 5. And we've never had, you know, a game like that, you know in your pocket before yeah and now we're getting that that's the big news that's what's crazy yeah and i mean they'll have touch screen controls and stuff oh uh, yeah i'd hope that they have functionality with backbone controls and stuff. well they did show uh in the presentation they showed it sync up with a dual sense specifically okay uh so i don't see why it wouldn't work with like a backbone controller. No, yeah uh also ios can use joy con Yes. Did you know Android phones cannot? Oh. You can use... I didn't know this until I was fucking around with one. Yeah. You can use one Joy-Con at a time on Android. You can't use both. At the same time. How dumb is that? Yeah. Uh, you can, however, on uh, on iPhone. Yeah. yeah. I tried on two different Android phones, and neither of them neither of them wanted to do it. Um, so I want to mess around with this. I I think this could be really cool. Yeah. So the uh, iPhone 15 Pro uh, launches at a thousand dollars with uh, 128 gigabytes of storage and a 6.1 inch screen. The Pro Max will be a thousand two hundred dollars with 256 gigs of storage base model with a 6.7 inch screen, and both will be available for pre order starting September 22nd. I'm not happy with how expensive that is. Correct. I don't want to spend more than $1,000 on a phone. Yeah. That's just ridiculous. But I'm gonna. <laughs> um, I'm also now realizing that when I get USB-C in my iPhone, I will now suddenly have all of these different controllers I can use on it. All the yeah. different like snap-on things that I have for Android phones. Yeah. Um, so that's that's good. I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, we also, you mentioned ray tracing and stuff. Mm -hmm. I saw that in the, in the demo and that looked crazy. I was yeah. like, ray tracing in a phone. That's that, that's insane. Now somebody, uh, replied to one of my tweets, uh, and apparent, did you see this? The gun in the division yes, was I saw just that. edited out. It was not there. <laughs> they just, they just they like, was like, I'm like, am I crazy here? Like, what is going on? They just didn't have the gun. So it was so obvious. He was like standing there like this, holding nothing. Yeah. So what was the clip of Resident Evil? Did he just have the knife? No, out? he had his gun. Oh, he had. He the had gun. his gun. What the hell? Like that was so that was so bonkers to me. Like for a second there, I'm like, his gun glitched out, and somebody said that's good enough for the presentation. <laughs> I need, I need, I need to see the 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 video of this. Like it could, I, uh, it couldn't have been censorship because Capcom had it. <laughs> unless That's Capcom, so weird. unless Capcom's like they asked him like, can you please not have Leon hold this gun? And Capcom's just like, no. Did Ubisoft fuck up? Is that what that is? That I feel like that. That's what happened. <laughs> It was just a mistake. Yeah. All right, I found it. How like how else do you explain that? That I think it's yeah, possible like, they were told no. But like you just saw him like aiming down his scope. Like what could that no, but be? Nobody has a gun. Nobody has a gun. But like he threw a grenade. <laughs> it's just oh my god. Yeah, and then if you skip forward a little bit to Resident Evil. Here's Resident Evil. Here's Resident Evil. All right, this is Village. He's got a gun, got a gun back. on his back. He's got a gun in his yeah, hand. He just pulled he's out, pulling out, he's out guns. guns. They're not okay. He's got guns. He's got yeah. guns. 
That's dumb. Yeah. That's very weird. And that is clearly like a Ubisoft thing. Also, we froze. What happened? <laughs> of all the pictures to me to froze, freeze on. Oh, they all froze? Oh, boy. Oh, man. Oh, no. How about, how about <laughs> this one? No, why are they all freeze? Oh, no. Uh, God damn it. Well, it is the now officially just an audio podcast. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on. Can I pause the recording? I've never done this before. I don't know. Try it. And we're back. Okay. And we're back. Here we go. Hopefully that didn't mess too much stuff up. Uh, white men jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, look at how beautiful these pictures are. Yeah. Now, they do look really nice. I, I mostly want it for the, for the nicer camera. Did, did we freeze again? No. Okay. no All right. No, Jesus, I got we scared. We just didn't move. I got spooked. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, man. The, it, it looks like it gets shadows and stuff really nice. I'm excited. I think it looks really cool. But so when I think the pre-orders happened Friday... It's... They cut. It cu they come out. They will first be available on the twenty second. Yeah, I think you can pre-order because I was like pricing them out today. I want to pre-order it, but I'm not going to be able to get it for a while. Oh, because you'll be in Japan. I'll be in Japan, so and I don't want to get it in Japan. Yeah, because then when if I get a Japanese one, whenever I take a picture, it'll make a loud shutter sound. Yeah. Uh, so why don't you just wait till after you get home? I will, but I want to pre-order it so right. that I can get it. I mean, look, you, you're going to be able to get it. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. I want to get the natural color. I didn't even look into it too much, but I want the natural one. I yeah, think. The natural looks cool. Black looks also cool. I think blue looks stupid. It doesn't look I that much better. It looks than. okay. Uh, yeah, disappointing colors. Pre-orders start uh, at 5 a.m. Pacific on September 15th. So, yeah, Friday. Okay. 5 a.m. Pacific? Yeah. 2 a.m. That's 2 a.m. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's 2 a.m. Which is fine. No. I'll be awake. No. Because we're later. Oh, no. So, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I got to get up at 9? They're going to have the phone. Will pre-order me my iPhone? <laughs> no. Just wait. 8 a.m.? It's 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. Oh, that's even worse. No, I'll just wait till I wake up. Because, again, I can't pick it up immediately anyway. I'll yeah. have to wait like another week and a half to get it. Just don't go to sleep? True. Uh, how do you feel about this for accessibility and reach for gamers? USB-C plus gamepad. iPhones reach? What are you talking about? Game console for those that don't want to buy a game I console. I think uh, what they're talking about is... You know, because everything's USB C now. Uh the controllers are um specifically game controllers are USB C now. Now that the iPhone is USB C, you can directly connect controller to iPhone. Uh -huh. And that just expands the reach of gaming to more people. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well Yeah, I still think USB C isn't uh the most uh accepted. Like like it would still be better if it was USB A. That'd be the easiest thing well, for people to plug a, a controller into. I disagree. I feel like because USB C is a much better design port than USB A. I'm not saying I wish it was USB A. Right. I'm saying if you want the most accessibility, USB A is what's going to happen. Like, right. like you're not going to take your fucking ps5 controller mm -hmm. that you that comes with your ps5 and plug it directly into the it, that's USB C, but it doesn't come with a USB C cable right it comes with the USB C to a cable right all but, of these things come with USB C. you to can a easily cables. get a USB C to c cable right for fairly right. inexpensive you i guess you could get that easier than you could get a lightning cable yeah yeah because let's not forget lightning if you want to make a lightning cable you have to get the license from apple and Apple eh. takes a cut of all your sales. Yeah, you can just go on Amazon. You get plenty of stuff. Yeah, get plenty of. You, you get like you can get like from a legitimate company like an Anchor or right or UGreen who actually you know licensed the uh, uh, made for iPhone technology. Or you can get like Alphabet Soup Company from China. It just doesn't. <laughs> um, 
I've been buying more stuff from AliExpress. Really? Because it's like a cage for a camera. Yeah. Like 60 bucks. Okay. Get on AliExpress, 30, same cage. Wow. Comes in the same amount of time. Yeah. You know, you know I've been doing to save money? Not buying Crime. Things. Crime, Just been robbing, thing, robbing people, it's kind stealing of, from stores. It's a little bit of a crime. Yeah, getting things from AliExpress. I did see. You know what? I'll pull this. This is not in the news. This is not a crime. This is not a news story, but I feel uh, obligated to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw this on Reddit today. Uh, somebody got an RG three five XX from Temu, which I've promoted before. Yes. Uh, and this is how it came. Uch. Bent. And then, Ugh. boom, oh. must have exploded. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's rough. I don't know why we're cut off on this. I mean. We're just going to be cut off. I'm not. I'm how not did that happen? Uh, and the battery must have exploded. Yeah. They refunded them and everything. Oh, that's good. So, like, what? I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. I mean, it was also $35. <laughs> so, like, this is what I mean. Like, like Temu's been getting a lot of shit recently. They, they, uh, there's this one website that, uh, did a whole write up about how they steal your information and stuff, or like yeah. their app is like really egregious. But the website is a stock short seller. So they're doing it to, to, to short sell the, Right. Temu stock. Mm-hmm. Um, I I just I use it like I use AliExpress. You know, like obviously you don't want to get anything important from them. You right. know, like I'm not gonna buy a fucking what well, like a like a nice keyboard. Like if right. I want a nice keyboard, I'm not gonna be like, ooh, but Temu has one for mm-hmm. fifty bucks, so I'm gonna buy one. No. You get it for like some dumb shit, like a little tiny like adapter for my for my 3D printer. Yeah. Sure. Like a cage for my camera. You can't fuck that up. It's a metal cage. Right. Um so shit like that. Anyway. Uh where are we? Uh who we, are you? We are up to your favorite topic. Hold on. Okay. I want to thank people. Okay. Juan Decimo, thank you for the 21 months. Happy 10 anniversary, ten year anniversary, Wolf Bros. Bob, thank you for the great content. Will, thank you. And I miss the comic book content. I said that. He didn't say that. I know. <laughs> uh, Drowning Rabbit, thank you for the six months. Six month Wolf Bros. Looks like I finally caught a stream to share a sub with. Oh, my God. Oh. Conquer Source, thanks for the 25 months. Got Swifty, thanks for the subscription. Uh, 1995 Poppy, thanks for the 100 bits. Uh, happy 10 years. How you doing? I'm not Italian, sorry. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, they're trying to. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's hard Italian. to come across in type. Uh, Rock and Val, thanks for the 38 months. And Kip Mer, thank you for the prime. Uh, anyway. All right, what is my favorite topic? The ESA and E3. Yeah! <laughs> Guess what? Get, get M- more roadblocks. Get fucked, Repop idiot. and the ESA have parted ways over E3. Uh, PAX organizer Reed Pop will not be working on future E3 events. The company and the ESA have announced. The ESA has also informed the Los Angeles Convention Center, which is the traditional home of E3, that it will not be putting on a show there specifically in 2024 the esa has not canceled plans for the 2024 event but if one uh was to go ahead it won't take place at the venue GameIndustry.biz understands that the trade body is also working on a complete reinvention of e3 for 2025 read pop which is also the parent company of GameIndustry.biz, had signed a multi-year deal on e3 in 2023 however the first effort to relaunch the event failed to get off the ground and the plan 2023 show was canceled the decision to end the relationship was a mutual decision uh we appreciate read pop's partnership over the past 14 months and support their ongoing efforts to bring industry and fans together through their various events said esa president and ceo stanley pierre louis uh, while the while the reach of E3 remains unmatched in our industry, eh, uh, we we are continuing to explore how we can evolve it to best serve the video game industry and are evaluating every aspect of the event uh, from format to location. 
We are committed to our role as the conveyor of the industry and look forward to sharing news about E3 in the coming months. We have enjoyed our time work, working with the ESA and appreciate their commitment to the games industry as a whole, says Reef, Reed Pops uh, Games Event boss Kyle Marzen Kish. Uh, while we while we will not be involved with the future of E3, we look forward to seeing its evolution and where the ESA takes it. Uh, the news follows Reed Pops uh, PAX West in Seattle this weekend, which also ran alongside Nintendo Live Show. Get fucked, idiot. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Suck it. I can't, I can't turn it off now. <laughs> um, great news. Uh, just great news all around. Uh, I'm a little mad at Repop. Where's our Comic-Con tickets? Where's the one I p bought with my money? You bought one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But like, it's it's been sitting, like they sent me the tracking number two weeks ago. Oh. That's like soon, isn't it? It's like, yeah, it's the beginning of October. Oh, wait, shit. When, it, when is it exactly? Uh, it's not Columbus York Day weekend. It's the weekend Comic after. Con. We also learned that uh, Reed Pop also owns Nintendo Life. They also own Eurogamer. They own GameIndustry.biz, which we just read the article from. <laughs> Very weird. So yeah. Comic Con is the twelfth to the fifteenth. Okay. Yes. So it's the second week. Yes. Okay. That's cool. I like that. That's fine. Um. Hopefully I can go. Hopefully they <laughs> give me a ticket. So uh, there's yeah, there's no shot E three is happening next year. There's no shot. Yeah. I, Same thing's gonna happen again. I. It's they amazing to me how it. like they're still trying. Mm. Like it, it's become abundantly clear that like they don't know what they're doing anymore when it comes to like not maybe it's not that they don't know what they're doing anymore. It's just that the industry has clearly evolved mm -hmm. and they haven't and they're still trying to figure out how to catch up. So what does the ESA do the, outside of this? The big thing the ESA does is they're, they're a lobbyist group. They lobby to the government on behalf of the video game industry. It's the ESA, for example, that advocates against the censorship of video games, like restricting the sale of video games. Um, this was a couple of years ago when they were trying to outlaw M-rated games or whatnot. It was the ESA's job to step forward and advocate that games should be protected under the First Amendment, which the Supreme Court said that they should. So they have done good. They've also done bad. They've mostly done bad. <laughs> E3 being like the most famous one that we all know about. But I think the one we forget about is that they're the ones who, lo again, they lobby to Congress against the, ne the need for games preservation, like allowing games to be included in libraries mm. and things like that. Yeah. They, they successfully argue that video games should be separate from other forms of electronic software, which is very detrimental to games preservation as a whole. It's a big reason why you're not able to access older games anymore. Do, do major game companies even like the ESA anymore? I feel like... They felt if, obligated to be at E3 because of the work that the ESA does. I don't know if like is the right word. They're, they I don't guess, respect them anymore. <laughs> they're workplace acquaintances. You know? Okay. Like you have the coworkers, you, you, you hang out with your coworkers, you don't mind your coworkers, but when you go home, your relationship with your coworkers end because mm -hmm. you got your real friends at home. It's kind of like that, I would imagine. I feel like they've uh, definitely, uh, the ESA has definitely fallen out of favor with uh, gamers. Absolutely. I don't know how game companies feel about them these days. Yeah. E3 doesn't need to ha be a thing. 
And every game company knows that. Yeah. Every game company's like, yeah, no, we're good. We can do this on our own. We don't need yeah. to pay the ESA to do it. I think a big reason why the ESA is like so gung ho on E3 happening is because I think 90% of their revenue comes from E3. Yeah. Like that's really the only reason why they're still trying to put this on. I don't think these major game companies need them anymore either, though. No. Like even 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 outside of the convention like we all know they don't need it for the convention right but do they need the esa to lobby for them i'm not sure it does help if there's one group to lobby for everyone so this way there's not like 100 voices doing it Mm -hmm. all at once so i mean that's the whole point of a lobby group is to have one representative from one particular topic be it right you know agriculture or teachers or you know the nra we need a technology sector in our government yes well like like desperately it helps if we start electing people under 40 yeah (laughs) you know they they under 80 yeah (laughs) under 75 i'll I'll even go higher (laughs) under 45 (laughs) having just like a group of people in the government that like knows anything about technology (laughs) would be very helpful yeah anyway uh good fuck e3 i'm glad that they're uh not uh gonna be around yeah well i'm glad that read pop parted with them yes uh i mean i like read pop for the most part and i think that they would have done a fine job right but uh I always compared E3 to PAX and Read Pop does PAX East and that was my favorite convention for mm-hmm. a long time. So uh, I think that they could have benefited from a partnership like that. But I think E3 sucks and I want them to burn in hell. So I'm glad that Read Pop <laughs> uh, backed away and yeah. that they won't be helping. And now there's no chance that E3 2024 is happens. And even if it does happen, will be any good. There's yeah. no shot that that will yeah. happen. Especially if it's not going to be in the Los Angeles Convention Center. Like, what are they going to do? Did they confirm that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, are they, they going to do it at a Holiday Inn lobby? <laughs> at this point, yeah. they got to start from the ground up again. Yeah. Could be in Vegas. Could be. I will not go. Unless no. they change the name. Our, dad, do, our dad would want to go. I would want to go. But... I uh, my because of my uh, st- stubbornness, mm-hmm. I cannot go if it's called E3. Okay. Or if it's or if it's the ESA at all, you know what? If it's the ESA at all, fuck them. Yeah. Five seasons total landscape. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, YouTube's making games. YouTube is trying out games in its next experimental offering. The company is adding a new playable section on the site that will include games that can be played on both the desktop website and mobile devices. Playables will only appear for a limited number of users to start, uh, and there uh, there was no list of t- uh, game titles published at the time of writing. 9 to 5 Google reports that one of the games uh, to grace the new YouTube Playables experiment includes a stack bounce, which involves a 3D ball bouncing on top of rings you must smash through with well-timed clicks. Uh, uh, if you've heard of this game before, it's because Google already offers it uh, as a mini game on its service, uh, Game Snacks. Uh, to check if you've to check if you're included in the experiment, uh, look for the new playable section on YouTube alongside content on the home feed. Bringing games to YouTube means the website has yet another form of entertainment entering it, the brand, joining short form videos, movies, uh, game streams, music, TV services, podcasts, and more. YouTube isn't the only video streaming service uh, dabbling in games. Netflix is, of course, uh, has its own push towards games. And uh, TikTok has also has games available for a limited number of people and has experimented uh, with allowing streamers to play with their viewers alongside um, a trivia contest. Google's most significant pu- uh, gaming push evaporated when it discontinued its cloud gaming service Stadia in January and plans for an NVIDIA-powered Chromebooks appear to have been canceled. Uh, some of Google's most played games uh, come when presented in a place people uh, run into them online, like on Google's homepage with Doodles. If games start appearing on YouTube as users scroll, there's a good chance uh, someone will play them. Okay, so in the top left corner of the YouTube app, mm-hmm. there seems to be this little this little thing. Okay. It looks like a little... Oh, it's just it looks like, a, like how the Google Doodle looks. Yeah. Know? Uh... 
Blast from the past, from memorable games to classic consoles. Hit a note of nostalgia with passionate fans of retro gaming. I'm going to hit... Oh. This is not it. This is okay. just literally... Yeah, it should say playable. This is freaking Cat Icarus, Scott the Waz. <laughs> Elliot is here. Where am I? Put me here. RGT? <laughs> Where's Bob? It's all retro stuff. Elliot's here twice. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo hasn't made a video in 14 years. Gaming historian, I love that guy. <laughs> uh, the fuck? Probably because you haven't been around that long. Fuck you. I've been around <laughs> forever. Uh, so we were not included in the No, the I'm pissed about it. Well, no, you're pissed you weren't included in that thing. Where I'm talking about not being able to play games. Oh, yeah. I don't I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I, I guess uh, uh, only a limited amount of accounts have the yeah. ability. Um, but I got like a billion accounts. It wasn't. It, it didn't look like it was on the Wolfden account. No. Um, so what do you think about Google adding games to YouTube, of all things? Um, it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, like, it gives you something to do while you're on the on the stupid app. You mean same thing from with watching videos. Yeah, I mean same thing with TikTok. Like I, I was mess. I, I like to swipe through TikTok a, a lot, and I, yeah. I've been like going into it and like looking at the filters and stuff, and yeah. like messing around. So like just having little fun little gimmicks you can do while you're like fucking around with the app yeah. on your little downtime while you're on the toilet. While you're on the toilet, and maybe you don't want to load up a new video, and you see some other bullshit going on, it gives you something to do. I did see a function on YouTube the other day that was like. Uh, shake things up, get videos related to color, and then you could pick blue, red, or green. Okay. And then you pick red, and it gives you a bunch of videos where the thumbnails are mostly red. Mm. And that's it. That's all. That's all it was. Yeah. You used to be able to play Snake on YouTube, so it's technically not new. Yeah, they always had some wacky yeah bullshit to do. But it looks like this is much more like concerted effort to like move towards gaming like yeah. actual gaming i think it's it's cool yeah gives you something to do uh okay now let's talk about nintendo not supporting tears of the kingdom fuck it uh nintendo has said it has no plans to release dlc for tears of the kingdom and is moving on to a brand new game in the series that's weird in an interview with famitsu uh ag Aonuma, producer of legend of zelda tears of the kingdom ruled out additional content for the switch exclusive there are no plans to release additional content this time but that's because i feel we've done everything we can to create fun in the world uh Aonuma said uh, it is a surprising decision considering the enormous success Tears of the Kingdom has enjoyed critically and commercially. It sold 18.51 million units as of June 30th, just a month and a half after it came out. That's more than half the total sales of its predecessor, Breath of the Wild, which uh, has shifted 30.65 million units. Uh, it is also surprising given Breath of the Wild uh, received DLC in the form of an expansion pass that added the likes of Master Mode, Heroes Path Mode, Trials, and New Items. Uh, based on the comments in the Famitsu article, it sounds like Nintendo is now thinking about the next Zelda game instead of Tears of the Kingdom DLC. However, Aonuma did not rule out a return to the Hyrule of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, potentially setting up a third game. In the first place, I the reason I decided to make this a sequel to the previous game was because I thought there was value in experiencing the game, a new game in that Hyrule place. Uh, if that's the case, if a new reason arises, we might return to the same world again. Uh, whether it's a sequel or new work, I think it's going to be a completely new game. So I hope you're looking forward to it. Saying that uh, I feel like we've done everything we can to create fun in that world is pretty definitive. Yeah, that's pretty. You're, you're putting the cap on it. I mean, from everything that we've seen in Tears of the Kingdom, it looks like they really did put everything they could think of into that game. I was really expecting some sort of DLC. Yeah. So that's kind of shocking to me that, that that to me says that the dlc for breath of the wild was planned yeah like well in advance of the game's launch yeah. and the fact that we're not getting dlc here means that at some point during development they're like there's no more we can do with this game yeah um, i'm honestly yeah. surprised I, I would have expected something i mean at least they're being honest 
I mean, they're freaking ready for the next thing. They're, yeah. We're going to have a new Switch sometime next year, so they got to be working on something already. Yeah. It's going to need a Zelda game eventually. Hotter.com. Thanks for the one month. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, we got more than that. Uh, Ozzy Mandis, thank you for the 27 months. A decade later, people will remember Stadia and reminisce how it kicked off the now normal way of playing games. You, will they though you shut up will they though kipmer thank you for the prime i do think a lot of people are going to be streaming in the future i think that that will be a a, 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 a lot of people are going to yeah do that but instead. i don't think anyone's going to be like thank you stadia no for all that you've done no. i feel like if anything, everyone will forget Stadia. yeah it, it'll be game pass and maybe g cloud I think our generation loves video games in a unique way that we'll never we will never see again. <laughs> what do you mean? I think that we love video games in the history of video games and when we see like, you know, uh a Nintendo PlayStation we're like, "Oh my god, that's crazy." Right. And like kids these days are going to be like, "Who cares?" Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I don't know because, you know, you it's the same thing with like other forms of entertainment media mm -hmm. you know that most people just want you know what's latest and greatest what's in front of them but you know there will be a good collection of people who you know appreciate the classics and the history mm -hmm. and things like that i think so. there will be people who appreciate the history but i think for the most part uh th these coming generations are going to be less interested than we were because we saw like the the right we all of the different advancements that have now slowed down right we were I and mean, we were there for the yeah. history you know yeah um all right anyway what's next uh this is big news that happened like not too long before we started streaming uh, Unity's new install fees are spurring massive backlash amongst game developers. So I saw this on Twitter. People were not happy. Yeah, people, uh, I forgot who me uh, messaged me about this, but I saw We got it. a tweet about it. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was talking about. Uh, and I saw it. I'm like, what is this? Don't talk to me. And then I read it. And I'm like, oh, we sh this is actually a big deal. Yeah. We should talk about this. Uh, game developers aren't happy with a new policy from Unity that will cost developers a small fee every time someone downloads a game built on Unity's game engine. It's called the Unity Runtime Fee, and the new pricing model will apply to developers who reach a certain amount of installs and revenue. Uh, we are introducing a Unity Runtime Fee that is based that is based upon each time a qualifying game is downloaded by an end user. Unity's announcement reads in part... We chose this because each time a game is downloaded, the Unity runtime is also installed. We also believe that an initial install base fee allows creators to keep the ongoing financial gains from the player engagement, unlike a revenue share. The Unity runtime fee is scheduled to take effect on January 1st, 2024. It's been universally panned by developers on social media since its announcement earlier today. Uh, Unity's blog post details what games will qualify for Unity runtime fee based on two key criteria. The game has passed a minimum revenue threshold in the last 12 months, and the game has passed a minimum lifetime install count. Unity further lays out the minimum revenue and install count to qualify with different thresholds for developers using Unity Personal, Unity Plus, Unity Pro, and Unity Enterprise. For small indie developers who use Unity Personal or Uni Unity Plus, they will have to pay Unity 20 cents per install once their game passes uh, $200,000 in revenue over the last 12 months and 200,000 life to date installs. This new policy has caused a lot of backlash among developers who are raising concern about free to play games, charity bundles, and more. Uh, one big concern is surrounding freemium games that cost nothing to download and rely on in-game purchases for revenue. For instance, if a free-to-play game has made $200,000 in the last 12 months but has millions of people installing it, the developer could end up owing Unity more than the profit earned from in-game purchases. Others worry that this could lead some smaller developers who build their games on Unity to pull titles from digital storefronts to prevent more people from racking up downloads. Uh, quote, 
I bet Steam, Epic, Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft will love having waves of developers pulling their games, uh, writes Frost from Among Us developer Inner Sloth Games. Inner Sloth has always paid Unity appropriately for licenses and services we use. I'm not a discourse guy, but this is undo and will force my hand. So so I'm I wanna know uh what was the previous fee because i know it was free to use unity but over a certain amount of uses or a certain amount of money made from the game you had to pay them it was based on revenue so like however much money you made from the right. game you got a cut yeah and That's... what was the what was the amount because there, there was a certain amount of money you made and then they wanted a, i right. think it was a hundred thousand it might have been but now what the problem is, is it's based on how many times the game gets installed. Yeah, no, I, I understand. So, like, if I bought the game and I install it on three devices, then that means the developer has to pay Unity three times. So the original fee was, uh, it's for... Uh... The, the free Unity was for small organizations with less than $100,000 of revenue in the last 12 months. Right. Uh, outside of that, they want money. Right. And now, all of a sudden, it's over... Uh, it's over $200,000, and it's based on how many... Uh, it's based on installation. It's $200,000, no. and it's 200,000 downloads and $200,000. Yeah. Together. Um. And then every install costs you money, which yeah. is absolutely insane. I'm trying to find... Because, like, if they had a live... If Unity was providing a live service, that would make sense. But yeah. it's it's the tool used to make the game. Imagine if Adobe Premiere charged me 50 cents for every person who watched a video. Yeah. That would be fucked up and don't, i would not use adobe premiere don't give them ideas <laughs> <laughs> they would absolutely do that yes so there has been an update uh steven detillo six minutes ago <laughs> well actually it was more like 15 right. minutes ago uh they're walking it back already that was fast uh i got a major update from unity about their new fees uh unity regrouped and now says only the initial installation of a game triggers a fee because that was one of the issues was that it wasn't just the initial installation. It was yeah. if you downloaded it on multiple devices, yeah. if you deleted and re-downloaded it, mm -hmm. they would count. Uh, demos mostly won't trigger fees. Mostly won't trigger mostly. fees. Mostly. Devs not on the hook for Game Pass. Oh, that's oh, another thing, too. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So that doesn't solve all of the problems. Mm -mm. So what are the Unreal Engine fees? Because... You're yeah, gonna see I'm a lot more sure. Unreal Engine. Yeah. Now. Um, I did want to. Greg Miller was uh doing a good job of retweeting a lot of game devs uh, about this news. Like Cult of the Lamb tweeted, "Buy Cult of the Lamb now because we're delisting it on January 1st. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, Inner Sloth, the official, uh, the official Inner Sloth Twitter. Uh, we use Unity to make our games. This would harm not only us, but fellow game studios of all budgets and sizes. If this goes through, uh, we delay content and features our players actually want to port our games elsewhere, uh, as others are also considering. But many developers won't have the time or means to do the same. Uh, Agro Crab. Today, Unity, uh, the engine we use to make our games, announced that they'll soon take a fee from developers uh, for every copy of the game installed over a certain threshold, regardless of how that copy was obtained. Guess who has a somewhat highly anticipated game coming to Game Pass in 2024? That's right, it's us and a lot of other developers. That means Another Crab's Treasure will be free to install for the 25 million Game Pass subscribers. If a fraction of those users download our game, Unity could take a fee that puts an enormous dent in our income and threatens the sustainability of our business. That's not, bef and that's before we even think about the sales on other platforms or pirated installs of our game oh, or God. even multiple installs of the same user. Uh, the decision puts us and countless other studios in a position where we might not uh, be able to even justify using Unity for our f future titles. If these changes aren't rolled back, we'll be heavily considering abandoning our wealth of Unity expertise 
expertise that we've accumulated over the years and starting from scratch in a new engine, which is really something we'd rather not do. On behalf of the, of the dev community, we are calling on Unity to reverse the latest in the string of short-sighted decisions that seems to prioritize shareholders over their products' actual users. I fucking hate this. <laughs> I fucking hate it here. That's what it is, yeah. The, so imagine you're a developer like aggro crab and you're deciding well i guess i'll use unity because yeah. i think it would be the uh, the most budget friendly mm -hmm. uh and i'll be able to afford it and i'll make a good chunk of money when i you know when the game releases and oh game pass wants to cut okay game we'll put it on game pass now all of a sudden unity's yeah. like fuck you give us a lot of money and also if you put it on game pass you gotta you gotta get screwed yeah and if people want to play your game you're gonna get screwed yeah. all of a sudden um so where was I? Okay, so Unreal Engine, yes, uh, is free to use for creating linear content, custom projects, and internal projects. It's also free to get started for game development. A five percent royalty only kicks in when your title earns over one million dollars USD. Okay, five percent of a million dollars is a lot of money. It's too much for me to do math right now. But so like a million dollars, like to get that, that's, you know, that's a lot more than a hundred thousand, you know? Yes. Um, $50,000. Honestly, out of a million dollars, not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think when Apple revealed the Vision Pro, they made a big deal about like Unity was supported on it. Mm -hmm. They wanted people to use Unity. And, you know, conspiracy theory brain over here is, be I'm like, that's because they had a big lawsuit with Epic and they don't want people using uh, Unreal. Yeah, uh, but absolutely. if Unity is screwing up like this, nobody's going to want to use Unity to develop for the Vision Pro and Apple really wants people to buy the Vision Pro and they know that if they're going to buy it, there's got to be software for it. The Vision Pro is dead on arrival. It's, look, I'm not saying it's going to be a massive success. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if they if apple wants any chance of this be of this thing being purchased by anybody it needs software and they specifically said that unity is the engine of choice for the vision pro if you at home want to make software for it so, so if unity is being foolish and nobody's going to want to use unity anymore that's going to screw up apple's plans for making the vision pro even remotely, you know, successful. So what you're saying is Among Us VR on the Vision Pro. Yes. That's what you're saying. Um, You're now making me realize that none of the games that they showcased at the iPhone event were Unreal games. They're all yeah. custom engines. Yeah. Very interesting. Um. So I hope Unity walks back even more because that's yeah. crazy. I'm trying to find out because you I... really can't. Like you cannot d d drop that on developers all of a sudden. You yeah. gotta like release a new version of Unity and say if you use this version of Unity, yeah, then we take a cut. I'm trying to find out like who owns Unity now. I know that the CEO is John Riccatello who used to run EA mm -hmm. during like the really consumer unfriendly years of EA. So, but I'm trying to figure out, I thought they were bought by someone. I don't know. They went public. Legend of Austin says if Xbox has to foot the bill for game pass games, do they start turning unity games? Do they start not accepting unity games for game pass? Uh, potentially. Yeah. They'll, or they would be incentivized to accept them less, for sure. Yeah. Oh, it's not that Unity was bought. Unity acquired Weta Digital, the special effects house. Yeah. That, That's what I'm thinking There was a, a push for Unity to be in the same position as Unreal. Yeah. Because Unreal was being used for visual effects. Mm -hmm. um, and that caused stock prices for Epic to soar because all of the fucking people on like Fox News don't know anything yeah. about anything. And they're just like, they're just like, ah, I saw it on, I saw this yeah. uh, new technology on uh, the, the Mandalorian. 
everybody buy Epic yeah. stock. So Unity is like, oh, I want people to buy our stock. Let's buy Weta. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's talk about Dbrand. <laughs> Dbrand, congratulations, you made a worse Spider-Man. It, it is cover. actually not good. Yeah, yeah, this is bad. Uh, we, people already had their issues with the pl official PlayStation one. Yeah, this one, all of the issues that they had are made worse on this one. Yeah. Except for the logo. We were talking about the logo last week. Uh, this doesn't have a logo at all. Well, so, I mean, legally you can't. So then, so it's even worse. It's, it's worse yeah. in every conceivable way. Yeah. I mean, that it's on screen. If you, you can see it, I don't have to read the article. Dbrand, uh, known custom skin maker for your phone and other systems, has made their own um, side panels for the PlayStation 5, themed after Spider-Man 2. Um, it is, it, it's basically red with a couple with like spider webs and then just like black goo on it. So I guess, uh, you can't get the PlayStation one anymore. I think, you I, I think they made it seem like, uh, there wasn't enough. It was hard. It was hard. It's always getting like sold out is my understanding. So yeah. So they made this to be like, Hey, you can get this instead. But yeah. like this look, this doesn't look good. Yeah. I this mean, bad. It's got a little spiral going into the fans. I also am not... I don't love the new versions of their plates. Like, of their side panels. Yeah. I mean, they had to make it legally distinct. The best yeah. kind of distinct. But, I mean, it doesn't look any better than the PlayStation 5 like default fans. And those things look stupid already. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I don't... I. The, the the PlayStation ones were already like you know fine. These yeah. are this 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 looks like it looks like a knockoff. It looks it like does look like a knockoff. Yeah, that's it, a, it. It looks like a knockoff you would find on Amazon. Yeah, it looks like something you'd yeah. see at, at like a like you're at like a phone store and you're like, let me get a case. Oh, yeah. here's the case. You know, it's yeah. vaguely Spider Man, yeah. but not really. Uh, and like. It's the same price as the official one. D brand will say it's a penny cheaper, um, which technically it is. But like that middle decal mm -hmm. on the console, that's another twenty dollars if you want that. They also sell like light strips to cover up the LEDs, and that's another ten dollars. So you keep adding all this money to it, and then it's more expensive than the default ones are. Well, and the official ones, I should the say. The official one doesn't come with a light strip or, right. or the I mean, thing like, in the middle. Who so. cares? Yeah, I'd rather get the official one. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if those are available. Uh, Liam from Krista Golf, who I am seeing in like a week and a half, mm -hmm. uh, said, a message to Unity inside Unity from the Denki Works team. Please share with all. Okay, it's eight seconds long. Let's see if we can even play it. No, I can't. Oh, there's no audio. <laughs> it's just it's just a guy fishing and it says stop that. That's it. That's the whole <laughs> thing. Anyway. Uh next news, let's talk about Mega Blocks. Sure. Okay. Do we care about Mega Blocks? I, I saw this and I was like, oh, they're making a Lego? Never mind. <laughs> so we all know that Lego has made uh, Lego versions of the NES and the Atari 2600. And then as I guess Microsoft saw that and said, we should do that. And they couldn't get Lego. So they got Lego at home. They got Mega Blocks to do it. I mean, they've had, yeah, they've had Halo Mega Blocks. That's, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. So they have a license yeah. with Mega Blocks. I forgot blocks. about that. They um, chose the wrong one. Mega Blocks is making a, a replica Xbox 360. Um, you make the system, the controller, uh, even a copy of Halo 3, which I think is kind of funny. The copy of Halo 3 is cool. Yeah. Everything else, just it's just it's not Lego. It, you so know what it, it is? It looks worse than a Lego. Because the 2600 and the NES actually look like those systems, even though they're made out of Lego. This looks like a Lego version of a 360. The you controller know? is the biggest The problem. controller is the biggest That one, yeah. looks horrendous. So... I mean, <sighs> Jab in the chat says Mega Blocks are fine. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. You know what it is? 
the the brick design mm-hmm. lego does, doesn't have the patent on that anymore okay they're they're more or less public domain so anybody can make a construction kit using that brick setup and they're all compatible with each other what lego has over everyone else are the minifigs mm-hmm. and the licensing power to get big brands like star wars and marvel and dc and harry potter and all of that so it's the minifigs combined with you know the licenses that's really what makes lego like the powerhouse that it is you know the mega blocks of uh, minifigs and like whatever the hasbro equivalent is. i know hasbro has an equivalent but i don't remember what the name is like those suck <laughs> compared yeah. to a lego no, they're not the same so. at all this is only 150 dollars though yeah which is a lot of money but if this was lego it'd be 400 dollars. true yeah so uh that's not yeah okay yeah well you're getting a oh, yeah. uh, uh, cheaper product i know? mean it's not even one-to-one scale mm-hmm. which i think is kind of lame uh it includes the controller oh it has lights uh it features a removable hard drive and side shell panel to reveal uh, an interactive interior uh, I do like that's cute. Yeah. So I like when they do that on the NES. That was cute. Yeah. Bricks and pieces combined with all Mega Bloks building sets and are compatible with other brand names. The, that's a cute way to put it. Yeah. Uh launches on October 8th. Um, you can pre-order it now from Target.com. I think it's sold out already. For some reason. <laughs> Mega Dragon, thank you for the 17 months. Sorry, I haven't subscribed in a while. It's okay. You don't have to apologize for not subscribing. Yeah. Uh, Embracer Group may sell Borderlands. Creator Gearbox. <laughs> uh, Embracer's days of buying nearly every game developer and publisher uh, it possibly can seem to be over with the company now looking to reduce expenses. It recently closed Saints Row Studio Volition as part of a restructuring plan that included uh, layoffs and game cancellations. And Embracer may now be selling off one of, one of its more valuable assets. The company is considering several options for what to do with Gearbox, according to uh, Reuters. Some third parties have said to have shown interest in snapping up the developer and publisher, which Embracer bought in February 2021 in a deal that was worth up to $1.4 billion. Embracer is reportedly exploring a sale with the help of Goldman Sachs and Areem, while marketing materials are being made available for potential suitors. Embracer said in June that it was making sweeps to change in order to reduce its debt by around $605 million to less than approximately $903 million by the end of its fiscal year. The Swedish company said it had t- said at the time that a proposed investment worth over $2 billion over six years ultimately fell apart. It was later uh, reported that the Saudi government fund Savvy Games Group uh, was the partner Embracer tentatively had a deal with. Embracer Group really fucked up. It's incredible how like they just bought all these studios left and right thinking, oh, we're going to be a big game company. And then the companies either didn't put anything out because it's hard to make games or the games were bad and didn't sell. And now they're like, oh, no, what do we do? Why specifically Gearbox? They got plenty of studios. Yeah. They they, they can shed it. I feel like maybe because Gearbox has the most value currently and if they can sell them at a high price. And have they made anything recently? I don't know if they... I don't know if no, they didn't. They had bought Gearbox after Borderlands Three came out, so they didn't really like have anything new. So it's valued pretty high, and also not making the money. Yeah, so that would make sense. Uh, Tina, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, twenty twenty two, really, and new Tales from the Borderlands twenty twenty two. That came out. It says 2022. Oh, I don't know. Shows how much I care. Uh, yeah, release October 21st. Yeah. Uh, and they published they published some games. Yeah, published some games this year. Uh, nothing good. A oh, Remnant Two. Remnant Two was a big deal for a hot minute. Right. Uh, Homeworld Three is coming out next year. And that's that's basically it. Uh, Tiny Tina's one. Wonderland wasn't so bad. Well, I mean, they got a. <laughs> I don't think the holding group that owns Gearbox cares about not so bad. Yeah, they need some blockbusters. Yeah. 
it's one of those things where like they expect every game to make Call of Duty numbers. Yeah. And not every game is going to make Call They're, of Duty numbers. The Embracer Group is looking at the numbers and being like, we have this highly valued thing that is not making us money right now and we yeah. need money. So Right. While you're reading that, uh, you, you know, have you scrolled down on Engadget? It'll just give you another article. Yeah. Intel's working on Thunderbolt 5. I didn't, okay. I didn't even know Intel made Thunderbolt. Yeah. It's like, I thought it was an Apple thing. No, I think it's like in partnership with Apple. Oh, well, now they're not in partnership yeah. anymore. Uh, I really hope Apple picks up Thunderbolt 5 and they don't try to make their own thing. Well, I think they're trying to use... This is Thunderbolt 4. Right. And that was expensive to get all Thunderbolt 4 stuff. Like that right. dock that, that, that we're using yes. right now is Thunderbolt 4. I don't think Apple's going to get rid of it because they've been using it. Mm. They've been using it since Thunderbolt 1. So, yeah, I don't think I don't think you have any. I like it. I like. It. So we're going from forty gigabits per second to fucking one hundred and twenty. That's a lot. Damn. Damn. It's awesome to just be able to plug one cable in here, yeah. and then I got my whole setup and everything's plugged in. Yeah. It's cool. Pacini was here before, and he had to take a call, like a Zoom uh -huh. call, and I was like, oh. He plugged in with the one cable, and uh -huh. I was like, "Use the camera." And he had to use the camera, and I used basically the studio for yeah. the call. Just by plugging in one cable. Anyway, Xbox credit card. <laughs> we know players are interested in getting more value from Xbox, and we've heard feedback from the community uh, that they want more ways to get value from their purchases. No. Today, I'm excited to share that that this is not what they meant. <laughs> we are excited <laughs> to share that we are introducing. The no annual fee Xbox MasterCard in partnership with Barclays U.S. Consumer Bank, a leading co-brand uh, co-branded credit card issuer in the United States. With the Xbox MasterCard credit card, players can earn credit card points with everyday purchases to redeem on games and add-ons at Xbox.com. The Xbox MasterCard will be available exclusively to Xbox insiders in the 50 uh, United States uh, beginning on September 21st and available to all Xbox players come uh 2024 with the xbox mastercard players can earn card points for every one dollar spent on purchases including uh earn five percent card earn five times card points on eligible products at the microsoft store uh earn three times the amount of card points on eligible streaming services like netflix and disney plus earn three uh Three times the card points on eligible dining delivery services Ooh. like Grubhub and DoorDash. And okay, earn, now and I'm listening. Earn one uh, card point on all other uh, everyday purchases. Uh, card members will also get access to even more benefits, including a bonus of 5,000 card points, a $50 value after their first purchase. Uh, three months of Game Pass Ultimate for new Game Pass members after their first purchase. If they already have Game Pass, they can easily gift it to a friend and play together. Uh, the choice of one of five iconic card designs uh, for their card. Nothing uh, else is important. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's it's. I I do think it would be kind of cool to have a card that just has a big Xbox logo on it. Yeah, I mean the, the card designs are kind of cool. <laughs> that would be pretty funny to just have a big old X. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, guys, don't worry. I got this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be the real big. My, I got I got I got friends who like like to swing dick with their Chase Sapphire Plus card or whatever, and like I'm I'm gonna get this specific so I can throw that Guys, down. Him. I, want, I got this. I want the points. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I I I gotta get Remnant too. Yeah, I got this one. Um, five times on stuff from the Microsoft Store. Who's buying stuff from the Microsoft Store specifically that much? I mean. It also counts like if you're buying games for your Xbox, so, like if you're downloading games to the system, you're gonna yeah. get five times the points back. Yeah, but come on, who's doing that? Now, three times on Grubhub and DoorDash. Now, what other cards doing that? I mean, my American Express is giving me six percent back on streaming services. Six percent is huge. They're they're only giving me three. So actually, that's not percent. This is times points. It's based on oh, it's percent. points, but it's based on like a percent. Okay, so is it is it similar to what you you? Uh, where what is the? 
players can uh, earn card points for every one dollar spent on purchasing. A hundred points is one dollar. Yeah, and that's similar to how like okay, the, so it yeah. is like a percentage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. I'll allow it. Um. Okay. Five six percent back on on uh streaming services is pretty big. Yeah. But uh. You're not yeah, nobody's spending that much at the Microsoft store is what I'm trying to fucking say. See, I don't know because like I I know people buy a lot of games. They'll buy games and not play them just to say that they have them. Yeah. And then there are, you know I mean I do that sometimes. There's DLC, there's like microtransactions that people like no, buy. I, I just have an Amazon card. That is five percent back. And I spend a lot of money on Amazon. Right. Because Amazon has everything. Mm-hmm. Microsoft Store does not have everything. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so whatever. I don't know. I don't think this. I. I mean, look, I'm not a financial expert. I have way too many credit cards, but I. I like to try to limit it to as little as possible. Yeah. Uh, I will say because we went to see went to the UBS Arena uh, to see Aerosmith, and I was buying drinks with my phone. Because I have my credit card on my phone. Yeah. And like, that is really convenient. And so, like, you don't even have to bring your wallet anymore. And I was trying to explain this to my wife. And she was just like, whoa. I know it's convenient because Hannah has my credit card on her phone. So, I'll be, we'll, we'll be sitting here and I'll be like, oh, I guess somebody went to a stop and shop. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, who is legally bound to me mm. through law and whatever does not have my credit card on her phone. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Glad we uh glad we sorted I that out. I don't have my credit card on my phone cuz I refuse to put a pin on my on my phone. Oh. Uh, it yelled at me today. Today yeah. it was like you got to put a pin on your phone right now. <laughs> and I was like don't fucking do. tell me that, man. Uh, next X defiant looking towards fall release date, uh, due to certification requiring more work than expected. Ubisoft could potentially launch X defiant, uh, somewhere between the middle of September and the middle of October, uh, as it works to obtain certification from PlayStation and Xbox in a written update, producer Mark Rubin said that Mark, uh, that Ubisoft, uh, started the certification process for X defiant on PlayStation and Xbox at the end of July. Ubisoft was targeting a release at the end of August, but with X Defiant needing more work than expected, it is now looking further into the fall. Ubisoft plans to submit the first party platforms for certification again in less than two weeks. If the game passes, then it can officially be released by the middle uh, middle to late September. Ruben also states that the game will likely receive a uh, conditional pass, meaning that Ubisoft will have to implement a day one patch and X Defiant is looking at an early to middle October release. If we were following the standard rules for game releases, uh, we would have set a date far enough in advance with enough of a buffer to have a confident release date. However, like a lot of things with this game, uh, we have not chosen the typical route. Uh, he continued, having millions of people play your game long before it's ready is not normal. Uh, not being afraid to show an unfinished game to millions of people with its, all its flaws is not normal. Uh, these are real tests and not just marketing events. Uh, so when it comes to when uh, we will release it, the answer will be uh, add show as up. soon as we can, yeah. and we will continue to update you with more info as we have it. Yes, uh, that's awesome. I'm glad that uh, the certifications are working. Yes, I mean I'm just surprised because it's rare that you hear uh, a, a big, big third-party publisher, publisher like Ubisoft failed certification because usually they just get submitted. And all right, good to go. So does this mean it failed both or for both systems for Microsoft and PlayStation? That seems weird. Yeah. To fail both at once. Because <laughs> usually, usually Xbox and PlayStation have the incentive to pass a big company's game. Yes. Uh, so they do. And we've seen it with Cyberpunk. They yeah, that was that. the big one. Yeah. Uh, so it's amazing that both of them were like hell no yeah oh there was an echo oh whoops Oop, oopsies. Ooh, well 
It's really it shouldn't have been that bad. The yeah. Echo. Um, but yeah, uh, this game I don't understand it. I don't get uh, yeah. this game really. It just seems like Call of Duty, but made by Ubisoft and games. with all the Tom Clancy characters. But not even. Yeah. I think it just has stuff from Tom Clancy games. Right. So I don't. I. I mean. Uh, these big publishers need or these big game companies need to know that they can't release a uh, dud that's yeah. like half baked and also it is interesting because this game was pre-alpha for like a long yeah. time or whatever they, it's they, called. Uh, the article said that there were like beta tests like throughout the year yeah and uh what they're trying to release it the way that it was like like you gotta <laughs> fucking have yeah. like a big difference in the game when you if you're gonna have a full release also like Ruben's quote about having millions of people play your game long before it's ready is not normal. Uh, not being afraid to show an unfinished game to millions of people with all its flaws is not normal. Uh, yes, it is. Now it is because we have things like early access. And it's normal now. It's yes, the new normal. It's, it's been normalized for years. Baldur's Gate, the one of the biggest games of the year, was in early access for three years. Yeah. So it's not uncommon. It may be uncommon for you, but not for everyone else. All right, last thing, Mutant Mayhem. We're getting a game. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. The movie is getting its own video game uh, set to launch on unspecified consoles and PC next year. Here's an overview of the game and franchise via Outright Games. We'll be making it. Taking place month, months after the events of the movie, the game will feature unique visuals inspired by the film's bold, painterly art style, uh, combining... Uh, energetic ninja teamwork gameplay with humorous narrative players will take control of the turtles as they interact with a host of memorable characters from the franchise and fight to save the stylized take on new york city from a new mutant threat so we had shredder's revenge last year it was great it was a good game mm -hmm. uh they just put out dlc for it which i've heard is very good they've already announced that they're going to be making a tmnt last ronin game it's far off in development yes but i'm like, excited for that yes uh, and now uh, they're over here like, hey, Mutant Mayhem, people seem to like that. Let's make a game based on that. So we're getting a lot of Ninja Turtles games. You said you liked the movie. It was a very movie good movie. movie. Yes. Okay. I I don't want to say they're putting all their eggs in one basket with Mutant Mayhem, but like we're getting a sequel. We're getting a TV spinoff. Uh -huh. and now we're getting a game. I feel like it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot coming from this one version of Ninja Turtles. When Ninja Turtles is a you know forty year old franchise with a lot of potential to pull from, yeah. So it could be you can do anything you want with the Ninja Turtles, and yet we're getting a game based on, uh, we got a game based on the classic animated series. We got we're getting a game based on, you know, the new hotness comic book right now, and we're getting a game based on the movie. I would much rather see an original take on the Ninja Turtles in video game form. Like, like an Arkham Asylum for the Ninja Turtles. That wasn't based on one particular comic, but it was, you know, its own original thing inspired by the comics. Does Nickelodeon own? Yes. They own the, the whole franchise? The whole the whole kit and caboodle. So that explains all of that. What? Th th why th they're... That they're putting all... The, they're like, oh, this worked. Let's run it into the ground. They, they've owned the Ninja Turtles, I think, since 2012. Mm-hmm. They've owned they've owned Ninja Turtles for as long as Lucasfilm has owned Star Wars, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say this, Mister: The Last Jedi is a good movie, and you're all wrong. Mm -hmm. Nickelodeon has handled the Ninja Turtles better than Disney has handled Lucasfilm. Okay, with the way they've like rolled out product and the way they've like not just farted out. I mean, the Michael Bay movies aside, like <laughs> they, all they've about. actually put out like good TV shows. The mainline IDW comic is the best Ninja Turtles thing ever made. They've partnered up with different toy makers to do different Ninja Turtles for all age groups. The fact that they didn't just, I mean, there have been, you know, games put out for like the old cartoon, for like uh, the original Nickelodeon cartoon. But like now they're like actually reaching out to other developers, like with Shredder's Revenge, with Last Ronin. So they're actually curating and fostering a better Ninja Turtles product over the since they've owned it. So I like if this is what they're gonna do with it, I'm I'm okay with it. But I just feel like putting all your eggs in the mutant mayhem ba basket already feels like 
you know, putting the cart before the horse in a way. I just know that Nickelodeon is hurting for money. Yeah. They, uh, car- like, cartoons aren't all it's cracked up to be since the, like, you know, the Cartoon Network, like, boom of, like, yeah. the, the early 2000s and the late 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they need to go with what is working best for them. So yeah, it makes sense that they would see the success of something like that and then try to pull more out of it. Yeah. All right. We're done. Uh, now we will talk to you people. Yes. And we will start with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Melon says complaining about shitty Starfield Game Pass marketing practices. Can't believe Bob has standards. What the fuck, dude? All right. I thought that was uh, going to be a real comment, not sarcasm. <laughs> um, wait, I don't understand. Is it it's sarcasm, but I don't know how deep the sarcasm goes. I think he's upset that you have like you're you're taking a stand on this and you're not But the, he's calling the practices shitty. Right. And I'm complaining about them. Right. Oh, I can't believe but okay, it's sarcasm. It's just straight up so yes. it's it's one yes. level of sarcasm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I understand. Bells says, damn, normally I agree with your takes, but man, you're big mad about Starfield day one, but like it was a few days you had to wait. (laughs) It's not really a big deal in my opinion. To me, it was a smart move because they can make money from all the streamers wanting to play early. All of the stream, all all of them. them. Uh, Wanting to play early that they would normally have to give free keys to period the first period we've seen so far uh it might seem like everyone is playing it early but that's not really true it's mostly just youtubers and streamers 99 percent of players will be playing today on day one so mainstream audiences probably don't want to spend a hundred dollars for a game you know but uh i know personally a lot of people who love video games and Mm -hmm. and uh you know, people who make content and stuff. So a lot of the people in my world, yeah, they're paying for it. But even the people that I know that don't make content were paying for it because they just like Bethesda games, you yeah. know? So, I, yeah, you can say all you want that it's not that big of a deal, but it's still a deal. It's yeah. still something that you should be mad about. Yeah. Because it's only going to get worse from here. Bat Mabel says, it's insane to me that people are really defending or even okay with the fact that they're selling a service promising that you will be able to play a game on day one and then not giving you the game on day one with the flimsy excuse that it's, quote, early access or whatever the fuck. They're so obviously creating a loophole on the system they designed themselves. I'm simply baffled. Bob is absolutely right on that one. I love it when people say that I'm right, even when I'm not. Yeah. (laughs) Gaming with Lax says, how are you being so obtuse about the difference between early access and launch day? Because they are. It's it's not that we're being obtuse. It's the fact that the, bi- the big selling point of Game Pass is you can play first party Microsoft games, including Bethesda games, day one. Mm-hmm. It is included with your subscription day one. And what Bethesda and Microsoft essentially did move was, the goalposts. Yes. You gave us two different day ones. There's the day one for everyone else and the day one for people who give them thirty dollars. Yeah. That's what we have issue with. Yeah, they, That's they, they what were we like find. they're like, you have this subscription service for this reason. Well, we're just gonna skew the yeah. we're just gonna skew it a little bit so that you owe us more money. Yeah, now. it's a bit unfair when you you change the definition of your main selling point. Yes. Uh, Lugi SP says, I paid 30 bucks to play Starfield Friday night since I already had Game Pass. I only did it because my lady took an impromptu trip to California and I had a lot of time to kill. Yeah, I... It was... I really, I wanted to fucking play it when everyone else yeah. was playing it because I wanted to be in the zeitgeist, you know? But mm-hmm. I fucking <clears throat> stuck to my guns. And you know what? The game's all right. It's an okay <laughs> game. I want to play a little more of it, yeah. but... uh. I'm I'm just fine with it. I, so I I wanted to take my Asus Ally to Japan because it's more versatile. Yeah. I didn't realize I had 500 gigabytes on that thing. 
So I think I'm going to take my Steam Deck. Okay. Because you know what? I don't need to play Starfield that bad. No. I want to play Armored Core. Mm. Although I think I might get more legs out of Starfield. And Starfield is not on Steam. It is on Steam. Okay. But right. I have Game, Game Pass. Pass. Yeah. Also, I'm going to need an outlet on this plane. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm only going to get an hour out of my Steam Deck. I think now they have out Like, we were on JetBlue last month, and they had Yeah, they got outlets yeah, on everything. So. All right. Invader Gold says, I didn't think much about the Starfield stuff. Oh, I'm in the chat, by the way. <laughs> Uh, until you brought it up, and I actually agree, to be honest, they're even doing this with Forza Horizon. These might just be a new trend for them, sadly, to be able to get physical sales before the Game Pass release. That's absolutely yeah. reprehensible behavior from, mm-hmm. from uh, Xbox. They're going to have to stop saying day one. Yeah. They're going to have to get rid of that. Well, I mean, for a long time, day one's been like a weird term because of things like early access, because, you know, games will launch even if they don't have their access they'll launch broken and need patches and patches until it's like up to snuff yeah you know i mean cyberpunk has had like four day ones uh lj says you can always get an ssd upgrade before you leave i was under the impression that it's a much bigger pain in the ass to upgrade the ssd on the asus ally but i also just put in a uh micro sd card yeah it has micro sd card issues but I got one anyway. Okay. So. Uh, I'm looking at kind of a breakdown now. Oh, no. It looks easy. Okay. All right. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. Yeah. What am I worried about? That's the battery, I guess. They want to you know, unplug yeah. the battery. Psh. Unplug the battery. Oh, and then you can do a cloud recovery. Oh, my God. I might... This might work out after all. Well, okay. Okay. Maybe I'll do, maybe that'll be a this weekend thing. Uh, That's restored, not data transfer, but still. It'd be great if I could just plug in the old SSD and do it just like you do on a Steam Deck. Yeah. Because then I don't have to reinstall anything. On a Steam Deck, you literally take the old SSD and you put it in an enclosure and it just copies everything and then that's done. cool. It's, it's, it's easy. Except you do have to you have to get a like a recovery drive. This looks yeah. like it's just straight on the BIOS. It just downloads. That's cool. Uh all right. Anyway. Um so Will, what is your hot take on the Gotham Knights has been rated for Nintendo Switch? Um it's interesting that they're bringing it over to Switch, considering I don't think anybody liked that game. <laughs> True. Um also it's interesting if they're bringing it to Switch and they said they canceled the Xbox One and PS4 versions of the game because they couldn't get it running on those systems stably. It had to be on PS5 and Series X. How are they bringing it to Switch? That's a good... Yeah. Uh, you know why? Because they're talking out their asses. So this is either a cloud version or this game is going to be trash. More trash than it was. Uh, Holy Lettuce is getting anything unique in Japan. What is something I should get? So I I need to make a video where I'm like hunting for games. And right. I think some of the things, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a couple of things. And if I happen to get one of them, that will be the subject right. of the video. So I'm thinking Game Boy Micro. Right. Want to get me one of them. What else? Would you Metal get- Gear GameCube. Mm. Would you get like a Famicom, like an like an original Famicom? That's too kitschy. It just doesn't seem like. Uh, I would love one, but it doesn't seem like that would be hard, difficult. No, that seems pretty easy to to get. Okay. Um, trying to think. I know I asked you like to be on the lookout for like. Some cool Mafex figures or SH figure art stuff. What was the first thing you said? Math. Mafex. Mafex. What is that? Uh, I think the company's Medicom, and their like action figure line is Mafex. Have I seen these figures? You might have. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're like high detailed, super articulated. 
cool, cool, cool. A hundred something dollars. <laughs> okay. All right. I understand. Yeah, they have the. I've I've seen. Yeah, I, yeah. I, there's plenty of places that have stuff like this. Uh, are there any particular ones that you're interested in? Um, I guess it depends on like, I mean, obviously Batman ones, but oh, it depends on what you see. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, I have your burner number, so I'm just that good. Pictures, yeah. Uh, Asteroid Blue says, "Are you going for Tokyo Game Show?" No. Uh, we will be there at the time of Tokyo Game Show, but mm. we could not get into Tokyo Game Show. So even as like a uh, an influencer, you have to pay. And Damn. there's a huge like uh, sign up process mm-hmm. that seemed difficult, and I just noped out of it. And right. then I tried to get in via some connections, and nobody was helpful. Enough, right. So I just decided, fuck it. I don't really even want to go. Got too much shit I want to do. Mm-hmm. Bob, I assume you know the retro future. Yes. And if you have any interest in where to find stuff in Japan, he has a great series. I watched some of that. And also, uh, Macho Nacho had some stuff too. He yeah. he had a uh, he showed some retro game stores in Osaka, and I will be going there too. Just letting you know that Starfield was cracked by Rune four minutes before early access and is free of having to deal with game pay. Okay, well that's stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as we know, crime is cool. <laughs> Top Ramen or Cup Noodles is releasing a Japanese exclusive Gamer Ramen. That's caffeinated? Oh my oh, god. Oh, I did see that. All right, I should get that. That just sounds like awful. Just ask ChatGPT for what to find yeah. in Japan. Okay. What to find in Japan? Uh, oh, should I have to log in? Ooh, the orange GameCube, uh, Drift Me Boy says. Because that was Japan exclusive. Yeah. That would be a good one. I kind of want to get the Metal Gear I mean, GameCube, yeah, and something. I will spend, I will pay a lot of money right. for that. I, I, that would be something. Um, okay, I'm on Chat GPT three. Uh, what, what, uh, what, uh, what should I ask it? What's the prompt here? Uh, uh what can I find in Japan? <laughs> are some retro gaming uh hardware items i can only find in japan japan is known for its rich history of influence and influence in the world of video games. And there are several retro gaming hardware items that you might find you in Japan, blah, blah, blah. Famicom Disk System. Thanks, dude. PC <laughs> Engine. TurboGrafx-16. Thanks, dude. Sharp Twin Famicom. I'm not bringing that back. Oh, on the yeah. <laughs> uh, Super Famicom Super Nintendo Peripherals. Japan had exclusive peripherals uh, such as Satellaview. Super Famicom 4-Button Multitap. Sony PlayStation variations, uh, PSX, a combination of PS2 and a DVR. Mm, I remember, I've seen that. Okay. Uh, Neo Geo consoles and games. Were those only Japan? No. Uh, they might have had a bigger uh, bigger footprint in Japan. Many of its games were developed in Japan. Finding original Neo Geo hardware. Oh, speaking of Neo Geo. Uh, well, this is SNK. Yeah, the Neo Geo. Yeah. Here you go. Ooh. Uh, Neo Geo wireless controller from 8-Bit Do. Works with Windows, Android, the Neo Geo Mini. Comes with a gamepad, USB cable, and a 2.4 gigahertz uh, adapter. Uh, also, they say Sega Saturn and Sega Dreamcast peripherals. Uh, Netlink modem for the Saturn. Mm. And various Dreamcast controllers and VMUs. Japanese arcade cabinets. Or I'm not getting an arcade cabinet. Retro handheld. Uh, Wonder Swan Neo Geo Pocket Color. Okay. Japanese exclusive consoles. Wonder Swan, Bandai, Pippin. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. The Wonder Swan. That was like the last thing Gunpa Yokoi uh, made. I feel like those are easy to get. See, the, the I know the analog stick is famous for like being clicky. That sounds and, awesome. Yeah. I like that. So this is cool. This is really only useful for fighting games, <laughs> but it's all I don't really know, SNK man. made. I, if it's going to be clicky like that. So is it clicking on the diagonals? I think so. I 
kind of want to try playing a Mario game with this. There you go. Here's the dongle. Cool. I'm going to try playing a Mario game with this. This, this, this sounds awesome. Anyway, uh, so I typed in where to where to get this. Where should I get uh, uh, a Japanese game? They said local retro gaming stores. Thank you. <laughs> Thrift stores and flea markets, gaming conventions, and Japanese specialty stores. If traveling in Japan, Akihabara in Tokyo, Electronic, which is known as Electronic Town. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know all that stuff. Thanks, dude. Chat GPT uh, wasn't very helpful. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and any and every other podcast podcast uh service of choice but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms go watch wood and i think jackson they're playing valorant without you without i it, i told them did i i i messaged wood and i said i'm not playing valorant tonight because mm -hmm. i gotta make a video and i'm also think the team needs a break <laughs> because uh it's been rough lately. Yeah. It's been pretty bad. Oh, no. We've been, we've been doing pretty bad. Uh, Well, anyway, thanks for being here. Go watch Willie's playing Valorant. Uh, ah, uh, he's playing, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, oh, we might not have a podcast for the next, like, two weeks. Oh, yeah. Because I'm going to be in Japan. Yeah. I and I'm to, not trusted with all this stuff. I wanted to pre-record one. But I don't know if we're gonna get I to doing that. Yeah, I don't think I don't have time this week. Yeah. to do that. I don't either. So, so I guess we're not doing that. Yeah. Oops. Well, well, see you in two weeks, probably. Yeah. Bye. Bye.